Preparing to delve in three, two, one. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Delve. My name is Nathan, and we, um, oh, I'm all alone. I'm actually all alone right now. How did that happen? Well, I'm going to explain how that happened. Uh, so Alex and I have uh, kind of been busy lately, and so we uh, had put a few things on the back burner and uh, had not been able to set up recording times with some of the people that we're talking to right now about uh, getting them on the show. And we do have uh, quite a few people that we are hopefully going to have in the upcoming weeks on the show. Uh, however, we arrived on the actual day that this is going to be coming to you and realized, uh, yeah, we, we still don't have any of those interviews recorded. So I'm doing this little thing instead because there is something that I did really want to talk about and I figured, well, why not use this as an excuse to do so? I wanted to talk a little bit about a subject matter, not too long, but just to kind of bring it out there and maybe even start a discussion about uh, creative burnout, because that is something that I've seen talked a lot about in more of the YouTube space, but it really does affect anybody of a creative persuasion, and I thought that it was worth taking a little bit of time just to address it, especially in the tabletop community, because if, if you've ever tried to develop a game or a system or uh, have done live plays, I've done GMing duty, I can tell you that it is a lot to do. It takes a lot of time and energy. And uh, then you get to a Kickstarter, and there's a major uh, business side that then comes into the mix, too, and you've got to arrange all of that. So if you're a developer, if you're a publisher, if you're a creator of any kind, there might be a time where you just get to that stage where you're just like, oh, I don't know if I can keep doing this. Now, I'm not saying I've ever experienced this myself. <laughs> no. <laughs> That never happened to me, <clears throat> uh, but uh, I have heard other people have experienced this. I wanted to give a, a little bit of maybe a pep talk at this point uh, to say that you're, you're not alone. You're not alone. Creative burnout happens to the best of us. It happens to all of us eventually. Uh, and you know what? If you are feeling the grind to keep producing output, hopefully what that really means is that there are people out there who are really excited about the stuff you do. Sometimes you have to take a little bit of a break. Sometimes you have to take a step away from whatever you're currently doing and recharge and just get reinvigorated. But the thing is, always keep in mind that there are people that really like the thing that you do. Sometimes it's, it's hard to remember that because if you don't have a lot of feedback, if you don't have people that are, are coming up to you and saying, oh my god, this is great, or giving you a lot of that, you know, interplay where you can talk about things that you've done, uh, it can feel like you're shouting into a void. And that's never fun. But if you just consider that once in a great while, there's going to be somebody who comes along and says that this thing that you did was really important to them. For me, that's always been my motivation. Uh, realizing that, you know, even if there's just a handful of people that really respond well to what you do, it can mean the world. I remember a story where uh, Garfunkel and Oates talked about those times where, you know, they just weren't quite feeling it, and they had to pump themselves up with the idea that, like, there's this one guy who drove all the way to come to their show, and they're doing it for him. Like, there's that one guy who just had did everything in his power to get to their show, and, and they got to go out there for a Todd, or whoever it was. That kind of thing. Now, that doesn't mean that you can't take a little bit of time away. Like, for instance, with, uh, with Orbital. You know, I'm getting back into trying to do some Orbital episodes as we're coming up on the holidays, because I know that I really want to do that. But I realize that it's a creative venture, and it is also something that is kind of time-consuming. So it became really difficult for me to do it through the entire year. So I'm looking at that as well. And when I was doing Rift Hunters, for instance, uh, you know, having no experience with being a GM, 
uh, I was like totally overloaded right up at the front. I didn't know what I was doing. Uh, I, I was just totally lost. And that can be really daunting. And you can feel like I have no idea how I'm possibly going to do this. But I always got encouragement from uh, from the crew that I was working with, you know, my players, um, from uh, from the people over at Open Legend, from uh, people that I knew listened to the show, uh, from some really nice comments that people gave me. And so I was really driven by that, like, oh, somebody really knows my thing or really likes what I'm doing. Maybe I'm not completely shouting into a void, right? Maybe maybe this is something good, and, and I can be happy about what I've produced. And for everybody out there who actually likes a thing, all right, it doesn't have to be this show, doesn't have to be anything that I do or Alex does, but if you like a thing, you know, that acknowledgement that you give to creators is a, a huge deal. If, if you have the chance uh, give a little bit of motivation to those people because they really appreciate it. No, I always do. But I'd say to the creators out there, that's not necessarily going to happen. There may not be an instant gratification back. But that doesn't mean people didn't like it. That doesn't mean that people didn't appreciate it. It's just a lot of times people are kind of silent on the issue. So don't get too discouraged by it. There's going to be that time when you uh, hit a wall. You're, you're going strong. And then you just kind of go, all right, I don't know what I'm doing right now. <laughs> I don't know what I'm trying to accomplish. Yeah, what do I want to do? What do I want to do? And it can feel like you're banging your head against that wall. The first thing you can do is just try to go around the wall. You know, maybe there's a roadblock in the way. Uh, I'll speak from my own experience. Sometimes I'll have ideas for a show uh, or an episode. And I'll think to myself, yeah, this seems like a kind of thing that I would do. And when I get down to it, I just, like, I can't quite congeal that into something meaningful. I can't find a way for that particular episode, that particular concept, to actually work. And there's all this other stuff that you might like to do, but, you know, you, you, you've hit this wall. And to that I say, just, just go around the wall. Just If that one thing isn't working, fine. Just move on to the next thing. It's okay. Sometimes you have to take a step back and just ask yourself, uh, you know, maybe this one particular thing just isn't working in its current state. We got to modify. We got to change. We've got to move through that. In a lot of ways, that is what I kept hearing from a lot of game developers, is that idea that it is iteration. Sometimes things don't work. Sometimes mechanics don't work. Sometimes a concept doesn't really get fully fleshed out until later in the process. Don't get too stuck on one individual thing, and, and don't feel like that's just something that you have to do to get to the other stuff. No, nah, screw it. Get to the other stuff. That's where your passion is, and follow that. Follow that. Don't feel like you have to do one thing in order to achieve another. You might not have to at all. Sometimes that thing that we're passionate about can start to feel like a chore. It can start to feel like work, and that's never a good feeling. But that doesn't mean that it's gone. It just means that maybe you have to take a step back and just reevaluate why you're passionate about it, what really drives you, invigorates you to keep making things, to keep making what you're making. You know, we've been doing Dell for four years now, and there have been several times where our format kind of changed. You know, at the start, we did uh, mechanics. And we talked about different mechanics in, like, tabletop role-playing games. But at a certain point, we just kind of thought to ourselves, that feels very limiting. We were sort of trying to figure out what we could do for topics. And then uh, one day, actually, Alex had said, I think we should probably talk about design. Just more about design and the design process. And I was all for it, because at least that's something I could wrap my head around a little bit better. And so we started doing more of that. Then we actually had the whole thing where, like, we can actually talk to people who are actively working in game development. And that's reinvigorating, too, because then you get to see all of these different perspectives. And so they bring all of these different kinds of energies into the mix. And that's reinvigorating, too. I've seen so many shows that can completely revamp their format because it's always a learning experience. Sometimes you set out with one goal. And you kind of end up with a different goal, but that's okay too. 
because you're learning, you're evolving, you're changing, and you're growing. That's not a bad thing. That's a good thing. One of the best examples I actually have is uh, if you listen to the original balance arc of Adventure Zone, which I was doing leading up to Rift Hunters, when they started that show, the intention was just to play D&D 5E with uh, the three McElroy brothers and their father. And, uh, you know, they had kind of limited uh, knowledge of the system, uh, and, and a couple of them hadn't really even played at all. So it was fun. And, you know, they're, they're radio guys and they're, you know, comedians. So they were working on that premise. Uh, Griffin even talks about it in uh, one of the, the Q&A sessions where that first arc is directly taken from a and d campaign. So they started out with just the basics. But you can see by the end of that arc that they started setting up other things. Because as he was even saying... It became really apparent early on after they started that they wanted to do something very different and, and more creative. So they started that. And this happens a lot. If you go back and look at a lot of the old school YouTubers who did this back when the format was very new, their shows are very different today. And I think most of them would agree that they are better for it now. So if you do find yourself hitting up against a wall or feeling creatively drained, I'm here to tell you, you are not alone. This happens to so many of us, and it is not limited to one section of the industry or another. It, it happens to all of us. Things that I kind of keep in the back of my mind when it, it doesn't feel like a lot is registering, even after you do it, is to just remember, like, Rome wasn't built in a day. You know, sometimes it takes a very long time to actually build something. And I can think of so many, like, overnight sensations that actually took 10 years to become overnight sensations. Uh, it, it can take a long time, and you're going to hit those moments where it feels like you're exhausted, like you're out of breath. And it sometimes happens because you sprint not realizing it's a marathon, and then you're like, I got to get my second wind. Where is my second wind? Do what you need to do to, to take that breath to get your second wind because your personal self and also your work will benefit tremendously from that. And that's kind of the reason why I'm even doing this episode because this is kind of atypical of a lot of Delve episodes, right? You know, uh, I just come on and I, I talk a little bit about something. But I'm trying something a little bit different, and I'm doing it sort of because I really wanted to. I really wanted to do this kind of a topic. I, I never really had the opportunity to, but I was inspired to. So this is my inspiration just kind of taking hold and creating a little bit of an episode as a, a palate cleanser between all of the interviews that we do on the show. And I hope that everybody likes it. Uh, I hope that somebody gets something out of this. And again, if one person does, I feel like it was an achievement. And I will take the win. Keep creating. Keep making things. Do what you're passionate about. If nothing else, you can be proud of yourself for having done it. On the being proud of what people accomplished train, uh, I also wanted to say that uh, recently... We had Elizabeth and Amber on, who made Scared Sando, which is a game that I can actually pronounce now, and I wanted to give them a big hearty shout out because they still have uh, 19 days to go in their campaign on Kickstarter. You can find it there right now, and they have already reached their goal, uh, and uh, they didn't have a very large goal, but they were able to reach it quite quickly. So congratulations. We all get to do improvisational singing now. That was definitely a thing I, I did not plan on doing. But, you know, I'm glad that a lot of people are going to be able to do that. Um, I also wanted to give out a nice shout out to some people that contacted us a little while ago. Dream Realm Storytellers is a development house in Turkey. And uh, they contacted us uh, a month ago or so to say that they had a Kickstarter that was already going on called uh, Sealand, the Norse mythology setting for D&D 5e. I certainly hope I'm saying that correctly. Svilland, S-V-I-L-L-A-N-D. 
Uh, they contacted me, and I realized that we would not be able to have them on the show by the time their Kickstarter ended, and I felt really bad. And hopefully, at some point, we'll be able to have them on the show because Norse mythology interests me greatly. I'm very taken with it, and we've talked to some other people about it on the show previously. So, any excuse that I have, I like to take. Uh, but I did want to say that. Despite the fact that we didn't have them on the show, and it would have been a huge boon to them. <laughs> but they, they did uh, completely fund their campaign. So maybe in the future, we are going to get uh, some expansions to it. And uh, if so, I'm, I'm really hoping to have them on the show uh, and, uh, and get all Norsey up, up in there. That's a word, right? Uh, and, and also, even though they need no help... <laughs> but I did want to say that if you are a fan of, like, Odd Ones Out, they have a card game that's on Kickstarter right now called Can't Catch Harry, and uh, and they're so far ahead of their goal, they <laughs> don't need a shout-out, but I did want to say, hey, you know what, there is a, there's a Moth Lovers game out there for people, and I really like to give some shout-outs to people who create animation online because it is such a taxing process. <laughs> like, I can't draw a picture. So when I see people independently doing animation, it just, I cannot even imagine how much time goes into it. And I would actually love to give you an update on Maiden Voyage, which uh, we just had uh, Tyler on the show. But I think that the Kickstarter was held uh, because I, I can't find the page for it right now. So I think he might have been holding off on that until later. Hopefully I'll get an update at some point. Uh, sorry for everybody who was, like, going to check it out and, like, oh, this sounds like great. It's not there. I don't know why. Maybe, maybe they changed the name. Tyler, if you're out there, if you're listening, let me know what happened. That would be great. And as always, make sure to check us out on Delvecast.com. And if you are a patron to our show, you can check out our Patreon. Uh, I actually posted something today. For any of our patrons, it's actually an oldie but a goodie. It might be the only place you can find it on the internet right now. Uh, back before there was Delve, Alex and I were trying out a thing called Xenodex. We have had one of those episodes as like the proto Delve where we talked about Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, but I did put up the one that we did for um, Eastern RPGs versus Western RPGs, where I was kind of taking the Western side, you know, more of the Bethesda kind of games, and uh, Alex was talking more in defense of, like, the the Japanese RPGs, uh, you know, his favorites, you know, the, the Final Fantasies, the dot hacks of the world. So we got to talk a little bit about the differences between the two, and, and it's nice and fun. So if you are a patron, even at the $1 level, you can uh, access that, uh, the first real thing that I think Alex and I ever recorded together. So that's a, an achievement in and of itself. And uh, for the two shiny patrons that we have, Bonnie Ainsworth and Dom Perry, uh, I'm going to send a shout out to you right now. Thank you. I see you. I appreciate you. So does Alex. So does the whole cast of Delve, which actually is just me and Alex. So uh, that's kind of reiterative. You can also find us on Twitter. I'm at Citanium. Alex is at EXP Limited, and the show is at Delve Podcast. Uh, stay tuned for more hijinks, because hijinks always seem to ensue. <laughs> and uh, with any luck, we might be able to uh, address this in more of a long form, uh, either on one of our live episodes or uh, when we can get kind of like a group together. That would be uh, great, because I want to get other people's opinions on like what you do when you need to get motivated or, or what you use as a technique when you hit up against a brick wall. Uh, I'd like to know your thoughts on that matter. And so make sure to hit me up uh, online or, you know, on the website and tell us if you happen to have something in particular that you do. Uh, we'd really like that because uh, right now I got to start taking my own advice and uh, start motivating myself to get some new things out there for people. Uh, because I know that I have a bunch of things that I need to do before the end of the month. And so l let's see if my own advice can be applied to my life. <laughs> we can only imagine. Uh, until next time, thank you for joining us. Again, always appreciate that. And uh, we will see you next time. <laughs>